Okay, this is a Dutch auger here. It's what we're going to use to be cutting the ground. Uh, uh, it's on an extension that will get us down to the depth that we need to go with your handle to twist it, give you enough room to still stand up, not break your back because you're twisting over, uh, <clears throat> bending over and twisting. Uh, you need a mallet to knock the soil out of the auger into a bucket. We'll take a bucket for each of the depths that we want to sample for. You need your plastic bags or a sample bag from the lab if that's what they uh, give you. A marker to mark on the bags so you know where the samples came from. And that's pretty much the hardware that we need. What about a shovel or a postal digger? Could we use that to dig a hole? Now, I'm asked that question all the time. It's really tough to get a good representative consistent volume of soil with a shovel and it's really hard to dig down to three or four foot with a shovel. Uh, so I wouldn't use that. Post hole digger, you can get uniform sample but you're going to end up with 20 times as much soil as you want. So it's a lot more efficient just to use an auger. You ought to have one as a grower anyway for checking your field moisture. Besides this hardware, are there any other things I need to take a proper soil sample? You must also remember to bring a copy of the county soil survey map. That lets us mark on it as we need to. The lab forms for submitting samples and requesting analyses, a notebook, pen, folder, and then we can make any documentation we need to record where those samples came from. Okay, why don't you grab the paperwork and uh, I'll pick up the hardware. We're out of here. Okay. Okay, you can use a county soil map, or this one's been done by the university, NRCS makes some maps, and it'll identify the textural variations in a field. So let me see if I have this right. This line right here represents a break in the textures? Yep, absolutely. So where do you think then we should take our samples? Here and here? Absolutely. Uh, people might call that zone one and two. In this case, it's a nice east and west split. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna label the samples east and west. Since I'm going to replant trees, do I need to take deeper soil samples or is the top 18 inches all I need to worry about? That's a great question. The best answer is to really dig six to eight foot deep backhoe pits. Uh, and then we can identify any layers that might be in the profile. If you're in the San Joaquin Valley, it's especially important to look for excess salinity with depth. In other places like the Sacramento Valley here, uh, you might have a hard pan at 20 inches, nutrient poor, gravelly soil below that. Now personally, I really like to have hard numbers that go down to four to five feet. We don't have a backhoe available today, and the soil survey doesn't seem to indicate any major problems. So we're just gonna break up our sampling into three depths. We got zero to 16, 16 to 32, 32 to 48, and that should get us down to four foot. Okay, well let's get started. All right. Okay, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to label these buckets, one, two, three. You're pointing um, at them, you want me to do that? Well, if you want to do it, go ahead. Yeah, right. great. Um, we'll be augering several holes in each zone, but combining the soil from each depth into one bucket. That way we end up with one composite sample from several locations, and we'll have a true average of the soil composition for that zone. Wait a minute, why do these augers have so many shapes? Okay, this one here is for really sandy soils. It's got a closed side so the dirt doesn't fall out. You notice the bits are curved around this way so it can grab the soil, pull it up into the auger. Uh, this auger here is for soils that are loamier. It's gonna be a little harder to get out of this closed bit so we've got an open part of the bucket. Notice the nice sharp point on this bit. That's really important if you're cutting through harder, drier soils. A lot of people will grab an old bit like this and your work's gonna be 10 times harder with something like this. So we're not using this. If you got a, uh, a kind of a clay soil, a lot of moisture, then we like to use this Dutch auger here because the soil will just push out the side once we pull it up. Uh, it doesn't cut well in dry, harder soils, but uh, when you've got a situation with lots of moisture, that's the auger to use. So according to the soil survey, this is a silt and clay loam soil, and I just irrigated a few days ago, so I'm assuming I'm probably going to use the Dutch auger, correct? That would be my choice. All right. So actually, I've gone ahead and I put the Dutch auger on this five-foot extension. That's taller this, than me, Blake. It's a little taller to start with, but it helps you pull it down to get it started, and then you don't have to bend over too far when we're down to four foot. You notice I put these uh, 
piece of duct tape on here every 16 inches, yeah. that'll get us our depths. So we are ready to go. We're gonna grab the auger, and then this mallet is really useful for knocking the sample out into the bucket. So let's go. All right.